and the guy clocks out and there's a pizza pie in his driveway and, and my car ups or my sand rail upside down. And Breaking news, uh, growing up, I was a pretty bad child, but I had an obsession for anything on wheels and it didn't matter, which obviously graduates into adulthood. Um, so if it was skateboards or orange bicycles, uh, I was all over it. Um, so the, here comes uh, multiple stories of being a bad child and how neither one of my children are anything like I was or am growing up. Uh, my son is the kind of child where you have to pay him to go outside. Uh, we have four or five acres and 150 cc go-kart and he'll do multiple laps and then take his helmet off and say, dad, am I done? And where my daughter took her driving test on a, on a manual stick shift and uh, she was born with a wrench in her hand. I mean, you can feed my son under the door. He's one of those kids that at 16 years old have no desire to get his driver's license or anything. And uh, he probably believes that if he wrecks that somebody will come and put him back on the track. But you, you never get to choose your children, but those are them. So growing up, I was a skater punk kid and I loved it. And I had wheels and cars and everything. And I may have been arrested one time for skateboarding on the roof of a church. But I mean, it had a, this kind of looked like a half pipe. It was a good thing. But Arnie and I share this passion for a 1986 Schwinn Predator, and it has to be an Arctic orange one because Arnie had one as a child, and so did I. But Arnie may have got his legally, and I may not have. So that bike was $219 in 1986, and my parents were damn sure not going to buy me a $219 bicycle in 1986. But I knew where one was about two neighborhoods over, and I may have slid out my window in the middle of the night and gone and permanently borrowed it from somebody only to be arrested at my junior high school and spending 29 days in juvenile on my first offense. So if you ever go to my shop, you'll see five of those bikes hanging up and I'm on like a little bit of a, a journey to find 29 of them because each one of those dang bikes owes me a day of my life. All this is leading somewhere from just being this rebellious bad child to where we are today. There was a parade for the homecoming at uh, Paramaridian High School. And everybody remembers long before the internet and long before all these, uh, hey, come buy this car or, or look what I found or anything, everything social media and right at the end of your fingertips, you had the wish book, which was the trader paper or wheels on deals on wheels or whatever you can find. And being a part of the parade float commission for some reason, um, it was all the jocks, football team, and then Travis, the skater punk kid. And Travis may have had this wild idea to ditch the parade float for our sophomore year. And let's open up the trader paper and find out what we can buy for $300 or whatever our budget was. And we may have found about a 75 to about 77 Chevrolet station wagon. And we may have purchased it with the money in which we were allotted to build a parade float. Well, that's all good, but none of us at the point had insurance on this vehicle or anything and we were just supposed to tow this wagon down with you know homecoming or whatever the theme was that year so we all got together and broke all the windows out of it and turned it into a convertible and we go and line up with all the other parade floats from the freshmen then us then the juniors then the seniors and you could have heard a pin drop when we pulled around the corner because we're driving a vehicle without insurance to the starting line of the, the homecoming parade. It's all spray painted up with multiple colors and a ski rope off the back of it for the skater punk kid to be pulled down the parade procession. It kicks off. There goes the senior floats and there goes the junior floats and there goes the sophomore convertible station wagon and then there goes the freshman. And of course, as we're going down the line and one of them, are, uh, one of us is driving it and I'm being pulled by this thing with really awesome cool skater hair, I promised back then, it's bouncing and everybody's jumping on it and it's just ridiculous. So we pull into the high school lot at that point and there was some faculty that may have been not very impressed with the sophomore class. And of course I had red hair back then and it was a tad exotic so, like if it was ring and run and you would ring the doorbell and run kind of thing, 
anybody could pick out the redheaded kid, like a red over there did it. So, of course, I got called in with a couple of the other involved or others involved and they wanted to know everything you know where's the why do you have this why didn't you do your parade float why did you do it exactly like this who's got the keys to this thing where's the insurance on this thing do you realize blah 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 insert all the bad things that could have happened here so we know we're all in trouble and travis is not happening because i may have told you i was a bad child this is where we kind of prove it as becoming a bad adolescent I may have walked out to the parking lot with another gentleman that was involved with the parade float, and we started up the mighty 75 to 77 Chevy wagon and drove it to the next school over, which was where our home football team was at the, or football field was at the time. No insurance, who knows where the title is. Convertible station wagon, completely gra graffitied up, driving down through the south side of Indianapolis with a tall redheaded skater punk kid at the wheel. Nobody's going to notice this thing, especially when he turns on to the football field, parks it right at the 50-yard line, and then takes the keys and throws them as far as he could. So needless to say, not only were we in trouble, but the homecoming football t game was tragically delayed as they had to tow our float off the 50-yard line. And then we all, of course, got in trouble and suspended or whatever else, but couldn't prove it but they knew the, the parties involved and the redheaded kid was one of them. That kind of led to a, a tad of a rebellious streak, maybe, as you might say, and reason why I'm friends with uh, the fraternity of lunatics in which I uh, associate myself with. But as you get out of adolescence into young adulthood, for some reason mine didn't stop and I have no idea why I never learned my lesson. So parade float gets towed off and we're all in trouble. The sophomore year turns into the junior year and we're no longer allowed to produce a, a parade float because of what we did for our sophomore year. So we didn't care. I mean, we were like, it's a parade, it's humming and parade, who cares? And half the kids were gonna go and do beer bongs anyhow or something, so it doesn't matter. But they were generous enough to let us to come back on our senior year and make a float again. Little did they know, we had like the one kid that was always good at drawing at school, like he was substantially better than, I mean, I could draw you some quality stick figures, but he could draw. So we took two four by eight sheets of plywood and put a hinge in between them and made it a large greeting card. And I can't remember what the theme was for that, but we basically had him paint Ziggy on the inside, outside, like a big Hallmark card, and we put it on our parade float, no decorations, and opened it up and had all the seniors sign the inside of it and just simply put, it's the thought that counts. And they were once again disappointed with our efforts for the homecoming parade. So all of this leads to young adulthood and Travis decides to catch a job as a pizza delivery man. Boy, guy, whatever. You kind of graduate from the paper boy to the pizza man, which I don't ever get. So all of this becomes a career at Papa John's Pizza. And while at the high school, if you got suspended twice in Indiana, they took your driver's license away. And I may have been the kid that knew that I was up for my second suspension and just told the school where to go. And then I started this illustrious career of delivering pizzas. And pizzas may have been a smoke screen for something else I had going on, but gosh, I was making money back then as a bad child. So Rob Pitts really, really, really wants me to tell this story about pizza delivery, and I promised him that I would insert mug shots into this video, which I will. When I was growing up and delivering pizzas, I may have been delivering pizzas on a suspended license because I may have been expelled from high school or suspended from high school, or I never got that taken care of at the time, and I just kept on a driving because if your horse dies, you just get yourself a new horse at this point. So I'm driving around, and I was a humongous fan of, of Volkswagens and air-cooled and water-cooled, and my daughter inherited that from me, and my son could give a hike about any of that crap. I had a sand rail, tube frame dune buggy, and I had a Baja bug, and uh, it's a nice day out, so Travis is gonna drive the sand rail with the little placard thing on the roof and go deliver pizzas for all of Greenwood, Indiana. And there was, an old, there was a, a neighborhood in Old Town Greenwood, and I come whipping through there hot with a shotgun pipe and a sand rail. And for some reason, someone had kind of taken one of the manhole covers off. And I kind of dodged it quickly, 
and decided to roll my sand rail into somebody's front yard with pizzas and two liters and the whole world going everywhere. And the guy clocks out and there's a pizza pie in his driveway and, and my car ups or my sand rail upside down and I'm looking at him and he goes, you wanna roll this back over? I said, partner, let's go. So we rolled it back over, it hits again. I delivered the two liters to the house but came back and said, hey, your pizzas are destroyed, you know, blah, blah, blah. But that becomes a police report for someone rolling their vehicle in this guy's yard. And I was driving while suspended at the time. So I decided to drive back and may have gone to jail for driving while suspended, but it was an infraction, but it was a multiple infraction. So that was time for me to go to jail. So that was one time and we will insert a mugshot of myself looking awesome in a Papa John's uniform, please notice. So they took that chariot away, that horse. So it's time to get ourselves a new horse. But I still had the Baja bug. So I went delivering pizzas. And the same arresting officer may have seen me, allegedly, driving down Main Street Greenwood in my Baja bug with the same loud tailpipe out there, water or air-cooled Volkswagen, Papa John's thing on the roof, delivering pizzas. And he knew that just six days prior, my driver's license was suspended I just went back to work and pulled me over and arrested me again for driving while suspended and being a bad kid. So we will insert a, another mug, mugshot photo here. Please notice that the day is just six days apart. And I'm also wearing a Papa John's uniform in that one too. So as I got older and I was like, man, this life of crime just, it just doesn't pay. And it's not really my cup of tea. And a lot of the people that knew me in high school and then know me now, like, you're the kid that like, like didn't somebody call in a bomb threat so we could all get out of school? And I'm like, it wasn't me, but I may have known the right people that did that. And so, I mean, it was, gosh, crappy decisions. So as we get back into adulthood, I was a club disc jockey for 26 years, but the last nine years or 11 years of my career, I took a job at a casino and you cannot have a record as you're going in for this position at casino, even though I know I had been arrested multiple times for driving while suspended as a child. And I had to go back like through all the court and all the jurisdictions and sit there and like, you know, they would look down and they would go, oh, Travis Bell is here after three and a half years of not paying this ticket. And give you this big long tongue lashing and you know you're just gonna have to pay the fine out. And it's just like, get with it, let's go. So I had to disclose for my Indiana Gaming Commission license or a badge to work in a casino, even though I never touched money, I was just an entertainer that I had been arrested for driving while suspended. And I had really cool hair back then and it looked really awesome, but they were not impressed with uh, my previous criminal activity and being a bad kid. So I had to go back in front of the judge and let him know that, uh, and hire my attorney and let him know that uh, I needed that off my record. Even though it wasn't this humongously ridiculous offense, it's still an arrest and the Indiana Gaming Commission was not gonna have it. The judge looks down, my, my case gets called and he looks and it's just ancient, old, old, old cause number, like super old cause number. And then he's like, Bell. And I'm like, your honor. And so I'm you know, walking up there, minding my own business. And then um, this is one of those days where the whole courthouse is packed. And I, you know, I'm basically wasting his time because all I was is driving while suspended and this old kid that needs to get all this crap off his record. So it's that time where he nods to the stenographer looking lady that whatever and tells her we're going off the record, you know. And he looked down at me and he says, why are you here today, Mr. Bell? And I said, well, I explained to him that I driving while suspended and I had to get this off my record and yeah, yeah, yeah. I also said, your honor, at the end of this, I need to petition the court. And he was off record and he knew he had a packed house. And he said, uh, Mr. Bell, I'd like to, you to know that after 26 years of being on the bench, you're my only success story. <laughs> That's tough because he's heard a lot of cases, but uh, he's looking not at the punk redheaded kid anymore with the big wild skater hair, just this disc jockey kid that can't get a gaming commission license because I was driving while suspended. So we go back on record and he just wanted everybody to hear that. And he of course expunges or whatever it's called and gets rid of my driving while suspended 
when I was 18, 19 years old. So now I can DJ at this casino that I've been working at for already not or a few years already. Um, but the petition was to get my mugshot photos because the kid in those photos has a lot to learn. Premier Financial Services has been a sponsor of the VinWiki YouTube channel for the last four years, and we love them for that, but we also love their simple lease. It's one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. It allows you to minimize your payment, minimize your down payment, have the flexibility to move in and out of cars, and take all of the advantages that are available to a leasing structure. So check them out at the link in the description below. We appreciate their continued support of VinWiki, and since you heard about them last here on the channel, they were actually acquired by First Financial Bank USA. And what does that mean for you? It means they're now larger than any of the other exotic car banks you may have heard of. They can move faster, buy more deals, and give you even better customer service. So thank them for their continued support of VinWiki and use them as your tool to buy your dream car soon.